Lisa had a backstory before, but it was pretty vague in my opinion. One of the biggest thing with Lisa visually was her hair. Yeah, I did record <laughs> videos of me being Lisa. Lisa probably suffers from panic attacks and have deep anxiety. I couldn't remember anything. I just blacked out. When I just started as an art director, I was in the process of remaking all the art of the game and we came to the Soul Riders and felt like, okay, let's do them, let's re remake the Soul Riders so they come up to the same standard as, as the other uh, art in the game. And I went to you, Matilda, and said, okay, so let's do Lisa. Yeah, and I was like, great, so who's Lisa? And when you asked me, I was like, I don't know, who is Lisa? Then we realized we have a problem because we, we need to know our characters if we're gonna make them believable. If we if we don't know them, nobody knows them. No. <laughs> Creating concept art for Lisa took a lot of iterations from me. It was difficult to get the grip of her visually. One of the one of the biggest thing with Lisa visually was her hair. Yeah. Do you remember? Because <laughs> oh my god, we wanted to keep her like iconic red hair because everyone knew her as Lisa with that spiky red hair but we also wanted to like move her into this century <laughs> we wanted yeah. to make her a bit more uh, modern with her hairstyle but also feel like a real girl because I yeah. mean that hair like I felt like like a little bit like a succulent succulent what was it, what's it called so. <laughs> <laughs> succulent like a plant she has this very iconic messy hairstyle with a lot of going on like hair sticking out everywhere and the, the roots showing. I worked on the hair and I thought well this this looks kind of nice and then I got the feedback which was like no it needs more more hair strands sticking out it's supposed to be super messy so I just okay add more and more and more hair strands until it looked just right. I put a lot of personality into her clothes like to show who she is as a person. She wears kind of worn jeans and the, this old leather jacket that she's had for forever. So I really tried to make the, the textures of the model look a, a bit worn and, and old. And like the fur on the collar is it's not white anymore, it's, it's beige, dirt in it. <laughs> I think the end result for Lisa turned out really good. Lisa is also special because we decided to give her a singing voice and that just made her more unique to us and uh, more I think, alive yeah more mm. alive exactly i remember being really nervous for the audition I was standing outside just shaking and then I got in and I played Never Gonna Let You Down with Colby Calais. Oh. <laughs> when I got out from there I couldn't remember anything. I just blacked out. So I got home and was really mad at myself because I thought I blew it. Then I got a call from Star Stable and they said I got it. And I was so happy, I just called everyone, my mom, my dad, my brother, and told them the happy news. I'm Amanda, I'm from Star Stable, as a singing voice to a character called Lisa Peterson. And I'm gonna In the summer of 2019, I got to go to USPC Championships East in North Carolina. And I performed for the first time outside of Sweden. But when I fall, you always catch me. This is so much fun. To sing, it was like the happiest day of my life. Uh, I feel so happy to do uh, that I got to do this. It's so, so fun. It's so fun. I've been working with the Star Stable for almost a year now. And it's, it's gone by so fast and it's been so much fun. Right now I'm working on the second EP with uh, Elena Gibson, who is the songwriter, and Sara Menke, who is the producer. They're so amazing. My favorite song is uh, Say Goodbye, because when we were recording it, I really needed to put myself in Lisa's shoes when she was standing there at the funeral. 
and it made me sad. I think you can hear it in the song. We all came here today for a last goodbye. And Lisa had a backstory before, uh, but it was pretty vague in my opinion. There was just a short text that uh, described Lisa. I think it was her age. Lisa Peterson is 16 years old. She's the sign of the star. She's a master at the art of healing. And her mother mm. died. She used to be a rock star. There was also something that we felt was a little bit... I don't know, it felt like a little bit unreal that this young girl who's been going through this much uh, had also had the time to, to be a rock star. Yeah. So in, in this version of her, we toned that down a little bit. Of course, she's playing guitar and she loves music, but she maybe isn't the rock star that she was in the earlier games. Mm. I think one of the, uh, the big changes we did is that she's uh, now from Texas. Also, I think we, we uh, developed the, the, the story of her mom a little bit more to make that feel as strong as it should be. Mm. A fun detail about that is that when I designed her outfit, uh, the jacket that she wears, uh, we came up with the idea that it was going to be her mother's jacket. She wants to keep her mom close after her mother died and she wears the jacket every day to kind of yeah, keep yeah, her close. Exactly. She's been dealing with this for quite a long time, but um, a death of a parent isn't something you get over. This is always going to be with Lisa. When we started to talk about that, we felt like, but I think that Lisa probably suffers from panic attacks and have deep anxiety that maybe she has triggers that make her remember all the horrible stuff that she's been through and for us it made Lisa a very like sensitive person mm -hmm. she has a big heart she has a lot of love to give but she's also quite fragile and um, quite introverted as well introverted as well yeah, we, yeah which is also beginning. something that we changed compared to before exactly. when she was like on stage and she was like a big yeah big person which is still a big personality yeah she's a big personality and she loves to be on stage but she's also like she's having this anxiety and maybe it's not that easy for her to be on stage maybe she mm -hmm. she has this demons that she <laughs> needs to fight in her head every time she st steps up there it's such a um, common issue today that people live with stress, live with panic attacks, live with anxiety. We want to make that something integrated that is not like something you have to hide. Mm. Mm. This is this is the reality for most of us. We people, we go through things and we want our characters to do that as well. Yeah. Mm. So that was very important for us. If, yeah. if uh, Lisa's mother had died, this is going to have an impact on Lisa. I always try to think about what internal thoughts are driving the way they hold themselves in their body. Like, what pose do they like to stand in and uh, how, how they position their legs and what, what type of emotion do they convey within the pose. So with Lisa, I try to make her very confident, uh, like with her shoulders down and feet wide apart, because she's an artist and she's out there publicly, like standing on a stage but she's also this vulnerable character. Like she's always thinking of uh, trying to find what's inside of her, um, especially when she plays the guitar and she has this um, emotion that she wants to convey. I like all the soul writers, but I wanted to animate Lisa, not only because of the uh, animation challenge of uh, playing the guitar, but also because I can relate to her having lost a parent myself and and also uh, the music uh, aspect of her. Yeah, I lost my dad. I think it's four years ago or something. Um, yeah, not, not in such a dramatic way that Lisa did, but I can channel that emotion, I guess, um, when animating. Lo lots of sorrow. <laughs> um, I don't know really how, how apparent it's gonna be, but uh, I feel like it, it gives some type of flavor uh, to her animations, uh, especially when she's playing the guitar and this new, s this latest song when she's uh, this song that she wrote for Elizabeth. That she's very emotional and she kind kind of I don't know very vul vul vulnerable. That's a hard word. When I animated the scene when she's playing her guitar and singing, um, I used the references of Amanda. 
So I used her reference, this was very helpful seeing how, how she plays the guitar and how she finds her emotion like uh, when, when you're playing the music. I did record <laughs> videos, um, uh, video references of me being Lisa. Uh, I do that for every character I animate. Um, I didn't use a lot of it, <laughs> to be honest. Why? Because um, I look too awkward. I don't know. <laughs> because Lisa is this confident, like young woman. I, I, I don't look that confident when I, even when I try to be. Um, well, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> when I see Lisa, I, I see a girl who's really looking for her roots. Uh, she wants to feel at home and she wants to feel safe. So I think that Lisa's dream is to, is to find that stability and to find friendship and love. Uh, and to belong. To belong somewhere. Because yeah. she has been traveling a lot, she's lost a parent, she's, um, she has her roots but she's also without a foundation. Yeah. And she's looking for that foundation and I think she's found that in Jorvik. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Lisa. I think she's going to be going on so many adventures and... Uh, yeah, she will have to face her demons eventually. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all have our demons and Lisa definitely, definitely have them and uh, yeah, she will have to face them at some point.